All right, today we're gonna to work on leverage squat or otherwise known as a hack squat sometimes. I call it a football squat because it reminds me of playing football, getting as low as you can. And that's the key I'm gonna talk about in a little bit too, getting you super, super low. The key on this exercise is to make sure you, it mimics the squat really well. So that's, that's the first point. So you're gonna work your glutes, your uh, hammies, you're gonna work your quads. Um, and number two, you wanna make sure that you don't put any bad pressure on your low back or on your knees. And I'm gonna show you some actionable tips today, things that you can take home today in the gym and you can use them and you're gonna get a really kick butt workout and and it's gonna be awesome. All right, let's rock it. All right, there's two ways you can do this exercise. You can do it in the back position or you can do it in the outer position, okay? Preferably, if you're trying to squat, and I'm gonna talk about that in a second, if you're trying to get a really deep squat, you wanna be in the outer position. This is the back position here, right? Now this works, definitely it does work, but it's gonna put more pressure on your quads primarily, and it's gonna take more, more work out of your glutes and your posterior chain. So if you're in this position here, it's gonna work primarily your anterior chain of your legs and your hips aren't gonna be as engaged at all. So you're gonna be here, up, and I'm gonna show you, but you're just gonna squat down. Now as I come down, this is more of a hack squat position. That's what they sometimes call it a hack squat. But you're coming here, and this is the position here. You could hold hands here, and boom, and come down. Now that's not the preferable position. The preferable position is gonna be the next position. All right, the second, the best position in my opinion, if you're trying to mimic a squat, is gonna be in the outer position here. As you can see, I'm having my chest up here and put the weight squarely on my shoulders here. And I'm gonna show you some tips right now what to do and how to do it. Now the key on this one is to make sure when you go down, you get a full squat, just like this. All right, so here I am on the squat, in the outer position. Now, watch as I come down, I wanna make sure I get a full squat. There's two things you wanna pay attention to, two things. First thing, you can go like partial squat on this. It doesn't, it's not help. You might as well just do a partial deadlift or something. So there's really no point in doing that at all. You either have to go to 90, and that's the second point. You can go to 90 if you want to, 90 degree angle, that's fine. Um, when I do this exercise or when I have my clients do it, I try to get them full range of motion. So get all the way down. So you're coming down here to where your butt scoops. Your butt, your hips, your glutes should scoop up underneath. So here, boom. Boom. Now I'm gonna talk about a couple points. Like I said, there's four actual points you can do to make sure you really get a deep squat and a good squat on this. Boom. The first part, the number one thing you wanna pay attention to is keeping your weight on your heels. That's the first point. Keep your weight 85, 90, 95% on your heels, okay, when you're doing this exercise. Don't shoot on your toes. If you shoot on your toes, you'll feel it immediately because your knees will start taking a lot of bad pressure and your low back will take a good amount of bad pressure, I mean a bad amount of bad pressure. So when you're here, make sure you squat down and you're squatting on your heels. And when you come up, you push through your hips and you push through your hips by sque squeezing your heels down, not shooting forward on your toes. That this is crucial for this exercise. Again, this mimics a squat pretty darn well. I mean, it's one of the best actually. So you wanna make sure you get that full squat motion. Come down here. Now, if I shoot forward on my toes, see here, that hurts my knees. So I'm not gonna show you too much, but you come down here and you start shooting forward. See that? See that anterior translation? That puts a lot of bad pressure on the knees and the low back will go out first. It's, the knees are gonna take the brunt of that though. So just make sure you're at 85 to 95 degrees. I'd say 90 to 95% on your boom, heels the whole time. So it looks like this. Boom. Boom. All right, there's two points here I want you to focus on. The first one is keeping a neutral spine. The neutral spine is just when you're standing here, chest up, shoulders back, retraction depressed here and you're not slouching. So on this exercise here, I call it don't hunch. Just don't lean over and hunch. When you lean over and hunch, you're gonna get some anterior translation, meaning you're gonna put your weight on your toes, which is ultimately gonna put pressure, bad pressure on your knees. But more importantly, when you hunch, it's gonna really tear up that low back and you're gonna put a lot of bad pressure on the low back. This exercise is great for low back strength, low back training, if done correctly. And the first thing you need to do is make sure you don't hunch, okay? Number two is, like I said, neutral spine. When you have neutral spine, you can put any amount of pressure on your body this way, that way, anteriorly, posteriorly, laterally, whatever. And as long as you're in neutral spine, your muscles will do the work. Your tendons and your fascia will not take on the pressure. So it doesn't matter how much weight you put on this bad boy here. If you're doing it correctly, 
then you're either, you, your muscles are gonna fail, which is great, you wanna go to failure, or you're just not gonna be able to do the weight at all. You wanna be able to lift it off. So you wanna put as much weight, it depends on your goals, but if you're trying to get really strong, and even if you're trying to get lean, I would go like, I, we'll go heavy as much as you want. But the point is, is that you need to make sure you stay in neutral spine the entire time so the muscles do the work, not the fascia or the tendinous tissue. So it looks like this here. Boom. Now my chest is up. Boom. Here. Keep the heels, remember, 85 to 95% on your heels, right? And then you want that butt scoop. Now my, my back is in neutral spine here. Keep your abs tight too, your abs tight. What I don't want to do is hunch over. You see the difference here when I do this? This is hunching. This is horrible on the low back. Your body will start, a lot of people will start to do that because they're going to try and go far back. Like here, they're going to try and get back all the way, which is great, but they sacrifice their upper torso. So they're, they're not in posterior chain. So they're not in neutral spine. So they're hunching. So we don't want to hunch. So that's the key. So see here? This is a hunch, this looks horrible. Don't ever do this, please. Here, boom, and chest up, shoulders back. Boom, boom, neutral spine the entire time. All right, there's two more points I'm gonna talk about, and then I'm also gonna talk about hand position here. It's really, really important, hand position. So, the first two points that I'm gonna talk about is when you're on here on the outer squat. Now again, you can do the, the inside squat here, right? Or the inside leverage squat, this position. The, all the same concepts apply here as well as when you're here. Okay, so if I'm here in this position, got the weight, the two things I wanna focus on, right? Go for the ankles, heels, keep that weight in the heels, neutral spine. Now, I wanna keep my eyes up the entire time. Your body goes where your eyes go. Your body will follow your eyes every time. So if you start looking down, like if you're really stressing and you're, the weight's heavy and you're starting to put your neck and eyes down, you're gonna go forward and you're gonna put that pressure on your knees. That's bad times. So always keep your eyes up. Your natural horizon's here. I'd say go about 30 degrees above, maybe 40 degrees above your natural horizon when you're doing this, okay? And chest up the entire time. And you keep your chest up by squeezing your shoulder blades back and together. Retract and depress your shoulder blades. That allows your chest plate to stay up and it's gonna be much easier to keep your eyes up. So here, this is correct. Boom. Here. Boom. Incorrect. Yeah, I can feel that on my back. My body's starting to do it. Now again, if your body starts crumbling a little bit, coming forward because you're really tired, all you need to do, readjust by putting your weight in the heels and keeping those eyes up. So when you're down here and you're feeling tired and your neck's going and your body's going this way, just look up, sit the weight in the heels and then fire up and fire up there in that position. Boom, eyes up, chest up, neutral spine, retract and press those shoulder blades, and you're good to go. Now I'm gonna talk about hand position. Okay, hand position. There's three places you can put your hands on this when you're doing the football squat. I call it the football squat, but there's three, three ways you can do it, leverage squat, whatever. You can have your hands on the machine, you can have your hands on your hips, or you can have your hands on your knees. The first part, is awesome. If you put your hands on the machine, you're gonna be good to go pretty much every time. You're not gonna internally rotate that much at all. It's gonna be almost impossible to, unless your grips are out here, which I, none of these machines have that, so you'll be fine. Okay, second one is when you put your weight on your, or your, on your heels or on your uh, shoulder here, on your hips, what's gonna happen is your body will internally rotate automatically. You can see when I'm here and I put it here, what I'm gonna do is my elbows are automatically gonna come in and it's gonna internally rotate my shoulders. And an internal rotation, especially with any squat or deadlift or any compound lift, is really, really dangerous. Because what I'll do is I'll start to crumble. My, I won't be able to stay, I'll start hunching over first of all, and then I'll start squeezing, my neck and my low back are gonna take a lot of the pressure, or my low back specifically and my knees. So you don't want to put your hands here. This is ideal, hand position, not here, not here. Big red mark, no. Third position, I do this just because I did, I've done jujitsu for 23 years and did a little MMA, and so my point is my knees are, I don't have much cartilage on them. So it's okay to do this position as long as you keep your elbows back and you don't let your elbows flare out, okay? It's hands on the knees. What you don't wanna do is push off the knees. So I'm here, I don't come here and push off my knees at all. What I do is I just use it as a balance because if my knee goes, goes out, there's always the catch on this, but the catch is super low. So it's just to be safe. So I go here, boom, and then up. I don't even really touch it. Maybe I touch it a little bit. Boom, boom, 
there we go. See, I'm looking down to see, make sure here, chest is slowed out. I don't, I wasn't looking down here, I'm supposed to, but meaning, I just wanted to make sure it's showing you right. Boop, that's what I do. It's up to you how you do it. Grabbing here is ideal. I do this too, as well. So there's three positions for hand position. So you wanna make sure you always avoid this one. Knees are okay. First position, ideal, it's here. All right, hope that helped. The reason I'm in this position here is, like I said, I call this a football squat. I played football for a few years. I don't know, like five years when I was younger. I'm from Texas, so yeah, everybody plays there. But the point is, is that when you're here, you wanna hit and go low. I played line. So you wanna hit and go as low as you can as you, when, you get, when you hit somebody, right? Especially off the line. You're gonna try to get underneath them and lift them. Now the point, the reason I'm showing you this is because on this exercise here, you wanna get your butt as low as possible. Get down deep in that squat. The goal, again, is to make sure you don't hurt your low back, your knees, you put the pressure, the work in the muscles, not the fascia, or connective tissue, tendons or ligaments. And I gave you five pointers that hope to help. Now, you can watch another video here on legs, uh, like a, a good uh, deadlift uh, video that I have for you. You can watch that. And uh, please subscribe. I'd love to have you on the channel. And if you have any questions or anything you wanna talk about, put it in below in the comments and I'll answer and help, help you out. All right, thanks so much.